Hi, um, this is just an overview of the components of the game, like what you find in the box. Well, actually, first, let's take a look at the box itself, um, with this pretty nice illustration of John Dark. Then, what you have is a rule book. Um, it's a very accessible rule book. As you can see, it has a lot of illustrations, a lot of examples of the game, so you really won't have any problem um, going through it and learning the game. It's pretty, pretty accessible, really. In case, the game also comes with two player aids, one for each player, that really will remind you of anything that you need to know about the game, so you'll be able to double check things uh, very quickly, very easily during the game. Then you have uh, the map itself, um, again represents England and France during the Middle Ages. As you can see, it's it's pretty, okay, it's pretty good looking, it looks like an old map, uh, but also it's extremely well designed. Everything is very clearly delineated, the areas are very well divided, uh, there's no ambiguity, which areas which, uh, where the pieces go, so it also plays very well. Then we'll have with the game, of course, a big bag of dice and a lot of markers and counters. We'll have a bag of markers of various types that will tell you, for example, you'll place these on certain areas and that will tell you who has the control of the area, then markers to tell you who is the aggressor in which area, there are markers to tell you who is the king, which nobles had disgraced, things like that. You will have the leaders of your armies. I divide them in two bags because basically the game has um, two scenarios. So if you divide them already like each bag, the leaders that are used in each scenario, then it saves you time when you set up the game. But we'll take a closer look at these leaders later, just to give you a sense of how much stuff you get. And also a lot of troops of counters for the units uh, that will form the armies that you will actually bring into battle. Now to have a closer look to those counters. Well, first, uh, in many war games, the counters are um, basically loaded with a lot of different information. Like this is an example from another war game. Uh, look how much stuff, how many things are going on here. Of course, the more numbers you have, the more information you have, the more you have to take into account when you're playing. Therefore, the more complex is the game. The war games where not only do you have counters that have all sorts of stats on them, but they actually even have two sides, and the two sides have different stats, so that even increases even more the complexity of the game. Whereas here, well, you can see clearly the difference. The war game here, each unit will have clearly, and again, nice looking illustration that tells you which type of unit, like is it infantry, is it knights or chevaliers, according to the uh, alignments that they have? Uh, is it longbow? These guys with this different background, they are mercenaries. Mm, you can have gunners, but it really, you know, just an illustration that clearly tells you what type of unit that is. Then you have a number that tells you the strength of that unit. An infantry one gets some reinforcements, well, it becomes an infantry two. An infantry six uh, takes a hit becomes an infantry five. It's very simple just at a glance to see what's the composition of each army, what each army can do. Of course these units they do slightly different things, but again, uh, it's extremely accessible, it will be extremely easy for you to learn what these units do and to be able then to tell them apart from one another. Then you will have another type of counter a little more complex, but again, not with too much information to handle on them. Um, which are the leaders. By far the most important pieces in the game, you will basically stack your leaders with a certain number of troops, so in order to form an army. That would be an army led by Philippe VI. These counters with the leaders, again, I have a little more information, but not nothing daunting. 
they have a number here that is basically used only for setup. They tell you when the counter, uh, when the leader comes into the game. So you don't have to worry about these numbers in the game. Like zero means this guy is on the board at the beginning of the game. Turn nine, turn eleven, things like that. Then you have certain stars on top of the of each counter. And that is the ratings of the leader. It tells you the political power and influence that the leader has, which will uh, affect the game in several ways. Powerful leaders, they'll be able to uh, have larger armies, uh, they have more troops with them. And then you have two factors here that will influence the way uh, the leader fights. The first one here on the left is bravery. Okay, so how brave uh, the leader is, how powerful and violent his attacks can be. And that one is skill. It just means how many troops the leader will be able to bring into battle effectively. So you can have different situations. You can have sometimes leaders that have a large army because they're mm, high in aristocracy, so they have a large army, but actually they can only bring a certain amount of troops into the actual battlefield. But you might have, for example, here, Jeanne d'Arc, that has like lower ratings, for example, than Philippe, but she has, she's just better. She has more skills than Philippe has. And so actually, she will be able to bring more troops into the actual battle, even though her army is smaller. So you might have, as you see, these two numbers will give you uh, very different leaders with very different abilities that will play differently. You might have people that are just as skillful, but more brave, and yet they don't have much ratings, they will have small armies, so there will be a lot of things that you'll be uh, dealing with. Last thing, you have certain leaders that actually, as you can see, they have a black stripe here. Uh, that means they are non-aligned leaders. That might go, uh, might fight for the French or for the English. This is why they have like uh, orange salmon type of sign, and that's like represents the English. And then they have the same exact stats on the other side, which is the blue one, that represents the French. So in certain games, these non-aligned leaders, and there are like a lot of them, these non-aligned leaders, in one game, they might go with the English, the following game, one of them might be fighting for the French, both for the French. It really changes each game, and that gives you really a lot, a lot of replayability.